The Brooklyn Nets might be broken, but there's two different ways that you could look at this. On a positive note, having two guys that strike the fear of God in you, plus the Ben Simmons fit, could make this team very scary. So much so, that they'd be in serious title contention. However, Kyrie's part-time status and Ben Simmons' injury setback could solidify this season as a hellish nightmare. No matter how you slice it, there is a whirlwind of possibilities for this Nets team this season, and various factors will affect how far they'll go. Before we get into that, be sure to leave a like on the video to support the channel, and sub to the channel for more content like this. Because I'm a believer in this team's potential, let's first talk about Ben Simmons' fit with this team, and how it makes their offense so overpowering. It's been almost a full year since Ben Simmons last played an NBA game, but just as a reminder, he's pretty good. As a fast 6'11 point guard with a 7 foot wingspan, Simmons puts a lot of pressure on the defense in the open court. In transition, he's too fast for bigs to keep up with him and he has too large of a frame for guards to realistically bother him. Thus, Simmons operates well as an efficient scorer in transition and even operates as a great facilitator as well, with him willingly hitting up teammates that run the floor with him. Matter of fact, it's even his elite defense, which I'll get to a little bit later, that also creates transition opportunities as well. In the half court, that's when Ben Simmons' offensive impact seems to get a little bit more limited. As we all know, Ben Simmons can't shoot and won't shoot the ball from the perimeter, so defenses cheat this by sacking off of him and making it difficult to get into the paint. However, I think that this can be mitigated by Simmons playing the 5 for the Brooklyn Nets, which is actually what I'm most excited to see from him. Typically when teams run smaller lineups, their typical trade-off is that by going small at the 5, they have to trade off playmaking at that position. However, Ben at the 5 still gives you an outstanding playmaker at the 5 who can guard pretty much anyone in the league. This is so advantageous for both Ben and the Nets, because the Nets would be running a 5-out system in that sense. As a playmaking 5, he'd have elite spacing surrounding him with the likes of Kyrie Irving, Seth Curry, Joe Harris, and Kevin Durant. So, in transition, you have to pick your poison. You either have to stop the 6'11 Titan from finishing at the rim, or you have to stop four 40% shooters from getting a great look from three. And yeah, who's the player with the fourth most three-pointers assisted over the past two seasons? Yeah, it's this guy. What I'd also like to see more from Ben in a Brooklyn uniform is him operating more as a screen and roller with floor spacers such as Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. As a pick and roll initiator with a big, players obviously go under the screen and essentially cut off the path to the basket. But if Ben is a screener for an absolute outside threat, you could inevitably get some mismatch opportunities and Ben's ability to playmake at the top of the key would be a huge asset as well. Mind you, that's just a breakdown of his offensive potential with this team. Defensively, Ben Simmons is quite literally a top 5 defender in the entire game. His freakish profile in combination with his high IQ allow him to be extremely versatile, with him legitimately able to guard 1 through 5. He's great at playing passing lanes, which obviously makes him one of the league leaders in steals every year, he's a great help defender, and he also has great switchability. All these factors play into why the Ben Simmons trade can play huge dividends for the Nets. With all that being said, I didn't even detail the fact that they have two of the best scores in the entire league on their team, of which are two great playoff performers. We all know how good KD is, but I feel that his impact as a floor raiser goes way under the radar. With the absence of Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons, there have been many instances where KD created something out of nothing, which literally happened yesterday when he dropped 53-9-6 to put the New York Knicks away. The Nets were heavily undermanned, and he still found a way, just like he did in the playoffs against the Milwaukee Bucks. 
I mean, who can forget the 49-10-17 that he dropped in Game 5 to take a 3-2 lead in that series? And even in Game 7, which was a losing effort, he still dropped 48-6-9 just to give the Nets a chance. Also, his running mate in Kyrie Irving isn't one to shy away from the big stage, hitting the game winner in the biggest game of his life, and even going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Steph Curry in the NBA Finals. But, even with that being said, this season could still be a nightmare one for the Brooklyn Nets. Ben Simmons is reportedly not even ready for one-on-one -on -one workouts, and mind you, the playoffs start in just over a month. On top of that, Kyrie still can't play in home games, and Joe Harris, who has been out since November, has no definitive timeline for a return. So, while you do have a team that can win it all when healthy, not having the team together will obviously crater their chances. The scary reality for the Brooklyn Nets is that as of today, they're in the playing tournaments, and they'd have to play the Toronto Raptors. At face value, this doesn't seem too bad given that the Nets are the more talented team. However, Kyrie can't play against the Raptors even if the Nets stay at 8th. Kyrie can't travel to Toronto due to his vaccination status, and even if the Nets moved up to 7th, he still couldn't play at home either. So, if Ben Simmons doesn't return before the play-in, then the Nets could be in a whole heap of trouble. Even with a loss, the Nets still have an opportunity to make the playoffs if they beat the winner of Hornets vs Hawks. But again, the Nets would be hosting either team, meaning that Kyrie Irving still can't play. Plus, if you ask a Warriors fan, then they'll tell you that nothing is guaranteed in the play-in tournament. The Nets might as well beat the Raptors in that one-off game, but Kyrie having to sit out home games means that the team can't be at its full potential night in and night out. Overall, the Brooklyn Nets are one of the most unique teams that I've ever seen, because I've never seen a team with this high of a ceiling, but this low of a floor. But hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. What do you feel about the Ben Simmons fit in Brooklyn, and also, how far do you think the Brooklyn Nets can go this season? Be sure to leave a like to support the channel, and also sub to the channel for more content like this. Hope to see you all in the next one, and stay tuned.